everybody welcome back to my youtube channel i'm so excited about today's video if you're new here i'm dr ali i'm an OBGYN. welcome to my little corner of the internet well where we talk all about women's health from periods to pregnancy to everything in between and i show you guys a little glimpse into my life as an OBGYN. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and become part of this little family. I love sharing my life with you guys, but also educating you all on what's normal, what's healthy, breaking stigmas, because I know I wish I had someone to go over all of these symptoms as I was growing up. And even now in life, it's important for us to know expected changes, what we're gonna go through in the future, so that we're just better prepared. I'm sure as you can tell from today's title, we're gonna talk all about menopause. Yes, menopause. So many women, I feel like, don't know what this is. And again, what is it with women's health and there being a stigma and talking about these very normal conditions and feeling like shamed or embarrassed to ask these questions. If you guys know me and you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm just gonna break barriers. We're gonna get nice and comfy. We're gonna talk about these changes that again, completely normal for a woman to go through. We're gonna talk about the transition period into menopause or what's called perimenopause. We'll talk about why menopause happens, symptoms that you can experience and what you can do to stay healthy during menopause. All right, without a further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so to start us off, menopause, what is it? If you break down the word, it's pretty easy to figure out. Meno coming from menses or menstruation and then pause, which is obviously to stop. So the stop of menstruation. So menopause is the cessation of menstruation due to ovarian inactivity. Essentially to break it down, what that means is our ovaries stop functioning. So because our ovaries aren't making quite as much hormone anymore, then we experience the lack of periods or menopause. So 12 months, no bleeding equals menopause. Now here in North America, the average age of menopause is 51. Does that mean that you can experience it earlier or later? Yes, 100%. It's just simply the average age of a woman entering menopause here in North America, 51. Most women start to experience these changes associated with menopause in the years before even getting to that point of 12 months without any bleeding. This transition period is often referred to as perimenopause. This menopausal transition or this perimenopause period is often marked by a decrease in ovarian function, which leads to hormonal changes. So what that means is the ovaries start to slow down. This decreases your hormones in your body and this will lead to clinical symptoms. In case you didn't know, the ovaries are the ones primarily responsible for making estrogen and progesterone. Those are the hormones that have a huge impact on our periods and a huge impact on a lot of different areas in our bodies. The ovaries start to slow down, we can expect to see changes as far as decreased estrogen and progesterone levels. Now, before we jump into all of the symptoms of menopause, let's talk a little bit more about this perimenopause period. Perimenopause is going to start at a different age for most women. On average, most women start to experience these symptoms around the age of 40, but some women can start to feel these changes as early as 35. So the most common sign of perimenopause is going to be changes to your period. You may start to notice that your cycles get longer than usual, shorter than usual, bleeding gets heavier, bleeding gets lighter, everyone's going to react differently to it, but you're gonna notice some sort of change. Although these changes to your bleeding pattern can be normal because it is a part of perimenopause, it is still extremely important to mention these changes to your provider. As an OBGYN, I know that changes to your menstrual cycle can mean so many different things. So it's important when you go to the office and you're experiencing these changes to your bleeding pattern, let us know. Obviously, we wanna make sure this is just this perimenopausal transition period and not something more serious like cancer or some other concerning medical condition. All right, now let's talk about more symptoms that we can see with menopause. Now, the two most common symptoms that we see in women with menopause or in this perimenopausal period is going to be one, hot flashes, also called hot flushes, 
and vaginal symptoms. So hot flashes. This is usually the sudden onset of extreme heat, usually to the upper body, face, neck, upper chest. These hot flashes can typically last one to five minutes and can come on with feelings of clamminess, sweating, extreme heat. Some women do experience heart palpitations from it and just the need to cool off. How often a woman experiences hot flashes is going to vary person to person. We do know that about 87% of women do report experiencing hot flashes during this transition. Hot flashes are also very common to occur at night. Obviously, this is going to lead to chronic sleep disturbances. If you're waking up in the middle of the night with a hot flash, getting extremely sweaty and uncomfortable, having to get up, change your sheets, change your clothes, Again, this is going to affect your quality of life. Now on a more positive side of these hot flashes, these are temporary. This is just a season of life. And most commonly, women only experience these symptoms anywhere from six months to two years. Again, everyone's gonna be different. Some women have very minimal symptoms and others, it can get really severe. As you're gonna hear me say throughout this entire video, if you're experiencing the symptoms, please let us know. We want to know about it. We want to help you during this transition period. All right, the next set of symptoms, vaginal symptoms. The most common vaginal complaint is going to be vaginal dryness. If you guys can hear my dishwasher during this video, I apologize, but dishes had to be done. It is what it is. All right, the next symptom. This is going to be related to vaginal changes. Now these vaginal symptoms are a direct consequence of having low estrogen. If you remember from my low sex drive, female sexual dysfunction video, I mentioned this in that video, but we're gonna review it. The vaginal epithelium or the tissue inside of the vagina is full of estrogen receptors. So those estrogen receptors are responsible for what makes the vaginal tissue more plump, it makes it pink, moist, keeps the vaginal secretions going. Now in menopause, as these estrogen levels decline, we're gonna see that reflected in the vaginal tissue. This is typically called vaginal atrophy, which honestly, it just sounds tragic, but that's the medical term for it, vaginal atrophy. What that means is as estrogen levels are lower, less of those estrogen receptors in the vagina are active so the tissue itself becomes thin not as plump there's decreased vaginal secretions because there's no estrogen so about 10 to 40 percent of women will experience these symptoms and this can lead to things like vaginal dryness it can cause dyspareunia or painful intercourse painful sex it can lead to discharge and itching and i'm going to put a picture up here somewhere so that you guys can see the difference in the vaginal tissue when there's estrogen around you can see that there's an increased thickness to the tissue and when there's no estrogen you see that decline and you see the tissue becomes more thin so other changes we can see vaginally are going to be a decrease in the amount of fat around the vulva. So this will lead to a thinner vulva and ultimately a thinner introitus or the opening of the vagina. Because of all of this, you can see a fusion of the labia. So again, we have a labia majora and a labia minora. And so we see a fusion of these two layers. You can also see changes to your urethra urethra is where your urine comes from now crazy to think about but the urethra itself does have estrogen receptors so again as estrogen declines we're going to see changes to the urethra also going to see changes in the vaginal ph normally when there's a lot of estrogen running around the tissue inside of the vagina is very acidic now when there's a decrease in estrogen, we're gonna see that tissue become more alkaline or basic. This again is going to change the normal vaginal flora and can lead to infections or discharge. So when we look at all of these vaginal symptoms collectively, as I'm sure you can imagine, this could lead to a lot of issues and really affect a woman's quality of life. It can affect her self-esteem, it can affect her sexual life. So definitely important to bring these up with your provider. I'm gonna leave a link to my low sex drive video that I'd done previously because in that video, I do mention some ways that you can help with vaginal dryness and these symptoms. Moving on to other symptoms we can experience, let's talk about bone. So it's normal in both men and women that after the age of 35, we experience some sort of bone loss. In women, this amount of bone loss significantly increases about four to eight years 
after menopause. And can you guess why we experience that more rapid bone loss four to five years after menopause? Hello, it's what we've been talking about this entire video, decreased estrogen. It is absolutely crazy how much estrogen can affect so many parts of the human body. It is such an important hormone. Because of that decrease in estrogen, we're going to start to see more rapid bone loss. This can lead to things like osteoporosis, which can increase the risk of a woman experiencing a bone fracture, specifically a bone fracture in the wrist, in the hip, or the spine. Another thing to highlight, estrogen also affects your heart and cardiovascular health. Again, you guys, I'm telling you, estrogen is crazy. It's so important. So in someone who has yet to reach menopause and has estrogen running around in her symptoms, that estrogen is actually protecting her heart health. This is why it's very important for young women to have ovaries because that estrogen protection is so important. When women go through menopause and have that decrease in estrogen, they are losing that protection that the estrogen provides. So obviously around the same time that menopause is happening, around the age of 51, that is also a midlife period where a lot of other changes are happening in your body. This is where some women can struggle with high blood pressure or hypertension, high cholesterol, a period of inactivity, so women are less likely to work out or have a good diet routine. All of these risk factors combined can actually increase the risk of a woman experiencing a heart attack or a stroke. Remember, again, like I've been saying throughout this video, please bring this up with your provider. Talk about these symptoms. We are here to help. This is a transition period in your life and we want you to go through it gracefully and with as much help as you need. There's no need to feel embarrassed or ashamed when you're having these symptoms. Again, we need to start to normalize these conversations because this is a normal part of life. Menopause is normal. There's no point in sweeping it under the rug and not talking about it. All of us are eventually gonna go through it, so I would love for someone to you know, prepare me so that I know what's to come and what to expect so that I know what's normal and what to bring up with my doctor. Now to finish up the video, I'm gonna tell you three things that you can do to stay healthy after menopause. And honestly, this list is also good just for your overall health. So these are things you should probably be doing even if you're not going through menopause. All right, number one, nutrition making sure you're eating a good balanced diet. It's important for women in menopause to increase their vitamin D and calcium intake to help protect their bones. Number two, regular exercise. We know because there's been multiple studies done that regular exercise is going to be protective for your bones. Regular exercise slows down bone loss and is just good for your overall health. Weight-bearing exercise like walking is gonna be very helpful for your bones, but also doing stuff like yoga and tai chi helps with balance and it's just also helps your mental health. And number three, having routine healthcare visits. This is so important. It's important as a woman to visit your doctor at least once a year. Even if you're not having severe symptoms or anything that bothers you, it's just good to go in and have a yearly workup. Have blood work done, any necessary tests for prevention of you know, diseases, stuff like that. It's important to go to these visits. Along with that, don't forget your dental visits too. Oral health and having nice teeth is going to be super important for your overall health. Having routine health visits, even when you're not sick, is going to help us either detect problems early or potentially put a stop to some issues that we may find. All right, everybody, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and that you learned something new. I know I've personally seen a lot of women in my office, specifically in that perimenopausal period where they have no idea why these changes are happening or what's to expect. They don't know much about menopause. So I'm making this video to prepare you and give you the tools and information that you need because all of us are going to go through this period. As always, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to leave links to all of my social media down below. It's going to be Ali Rod MD everywhere, TikTok, Instagram, and my blog post. As always, my blog post, I write in Spanish and in English so that both can benefit. All right, you guys, I love you so much. Thank you so much for all of your support. You guys mean the world to me. And as always, please remember to be kind and show love to everyone around. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.